cephalopods are amongst the most intelligent and deadliest of the marine invertebrate animals. The term cephalopod comes from a Greek term which literally means head foot and refers to their unique body plan where their head connects directly to their numerous arms or tentacles. The cephalopods are part of a larger group called the mollusks. The mollusks include snails and clams. All cephalopods are entirely carnivorous and predatory. Most are fast swimming active hunters such as the squid and the cuttlefish. Other living forms of cephalopod are less active. The octopus uses stealth, camouflage and a degree of intelligence to catch its prey. The pearly nautilus, which lives today in the Indo-Pacific, uses a completely different tactic. The nautilus is unique in that it possesses a hard external shell, which is coiled and contains numerous internal chambers. The chambers are filled with a mixture of liquid and gas, and the chamber walls are called septa. And an important tube-like structure called the siphuncle connects the chambers and acts as a pump, regulating the ratio of the fluids. The Nautilus is somewhat anomalous in that it is the only living example of an externally shelled cephalopod, being greatly outnumbered by soft body forms today. In the past, externally shelled cephalopods were much more common. In fact, all cephalopods share a shelled ancestor. Cephalopods may have first evolved from an older animal group known as monoplacophorans, which are mollusk-like bottom-dwelling organisms at the beginning of the Cambrian time period around 539 million years ago. One potential ancestral species is Tanuella, which had a slightly curved shell with internal septa. Plectronoceros from the late Cambrian is the earliest known cephalopod, being the first noted with both septa and a siphuncle. The external shells likely protected against predation for these early ancestors as well as helping them become more buoyant which among other functions might have helped them escape. Different shell structures subsequently evolved from the early cone shaped shells. The early ancestor forms tended to have straight or slightly curved shells. Over time their shells became more fully coiled which brought ecological benefits as these shells had a lower centre of gravity leading to better stability in the water and likely increase their efficiency through buoyancy. From these ancestors, the group known as the nautiloids that we mentioned earlier first appeared in the late Cambrian, of which some representatives are still alive today. However, straight-shelled cephalopods were just as successful as the coiled forms. A notably large straight-shelled nautiloid, known as Camaroceros, evolved during the Ordovician around 470 million years ago. Its shell grew to at least one metre in length. Some fossil relatives are much larger than this. Camaroceros must have been a formidable predator which ambushed its prey on the seafloor. At this time, Sphoceros is described as a cephalopod that began wrapping its soft body around its outer shell. This marks the beginning of shell internalization, leading to the evolution of the coleoids, the soft-bodied cephalopod group during the Devonian and Carboniferous. Modern cephalopods, including squid, octopus and cuttlefish, are all coleoids. A new and important group of fossil cephalopods with external shells evolved around this time in the Devonian. They're called aminoids. Their shells were distinct from the nautiloids in terms of the position of the siphuncle and the shape of the internal chamber walls. Aminoids flourished in the seas, particularly during the later Jurassic and Cretaceous time periods. They evolved rapidly during this time and were very common. Their success may have been linked to the way in which they grew and reproduced. During the Jurassic and Cretaceous, some aminoids developed very unusual shell shapes, such as nipponites. It remains unclear why these experimental shell forms appeared. In some cases, it appears to have given the animal more stability and control. Enormous size variation is also seen in aminoids, such as in the Cretaceous form Parapozoosia, whose shell grew to staggeringly big proportions, up to 3 metres across. Externally shelled cephalopods dominated marine ecosystems from
from the mid Paleozoic to the end of the Mesozoic. The mass extinction at the very end of the Cretaceous, which saw the demise of the non-avian dinosaurs on land, simultaneously wiped out the entire ammonite group in the sea. In particular, this mass extinction took a very heavy toll on cephalopods living in shallower waters. Those living in deeper waters, in particular the coleoids, survived. The cephalopod habitat reverted to the depths. Over time, some cephalopods reoccupied shallower waters and live there today, as well as many still thriving in the deep sea. And now we know where the shell cephalopods came from.